Well, the cat's gone, we're back. So anyhow, there was a, we did a video a little while ago about uh, boots and boots fitting and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I watched a lot of other ones, there are a lot of common grounds <clears throat> in the thing. Obviously, one of the most important things is that the boot fits to the foot and it's comfortable. So we start out by taking a liner out of a boot. It's the only way you're gonna tell if it actually fits. Put the liner on first. Just like any shoe store and stuff, you can actually feel the end where your child or your toe hits, and that'll give you a good indication. Being inside the boot itself, you won't be able to do that because you can't compress the toe of the boot itself. It's too hard. So take the liner out, make sure that the thing fits and feels good there. Now in the world of boots, you have many options. You can get lace up boots, which are easy to do. And then you can get boa boots, which work off the dial and spin. Pros to the lace up boot are, you can always replace a lace if you break one. Pros to the boa type boot is that it's quick, fast, and convenient. But if you do break one of the wires on the boot itself, you do have a replacement problem that quite often you'll have to go back to the shop itself to get it fixed for that. So that, that's part of the issue. Now, comfortability and fit is extremely important. Also, it's very important as stated on uh, Angry Snowboarder and a few others, replace the footbed. Uh, the footbeds that they do put into the boot itself for most manufacturers just don't offer you the support. They don't have the arch support or anything you need and quite often they go flat on you, they're too flexible, and they don't give you the support, just like a regular street shoe. Now, when buying boots for children, consider this. Don't buy them for two years of growth, because if the boot goes onto the foot, and you bought it for growth, the foot moves back and forth inside the boot. Those, those uh, use of the boot itself is somewhat interfered with, because the foot is sliding, where the boot needs to fit exactly like something else you use every day, and that would be like a glove. So think about putting a glove on your hand and how it comes across. You feel it everywhere, all the way around. You have contact, you move your hand, the glove moves with you. Take a boot that you buy for your child that's too big, put it in there, the boot moves around, the leg doesn't get any signal, and it doesn't turn with it. You want everything to turn together as a unit and not separately or independently. So sizing is critical on that. Uh, don't overbuy the kid's size. Kids' boots are actually much cheaper than adult boots, and you're gonna save yourself a lot of trouble and save your child a lot of aggravation and stuff. Things that people do wrong when they go to rental places and uh, the resorts and put a boot on, they put in two pairs of socks, one pair of socks, all pant legs and all outer pants pulled up above the cuff of the boot and out. The only thing that will go into the boot is a sock, maybe a base layer, so that the boot can be tightened completely around there. If you can hit your hand inside a boot like this and get your hand to slide down and touch the top of their ankle like this, the boot is not tight enough or was not secure tight enough. Uh, a lot of people say, well, it's supposed to be comfortable. Again, the boot should fit and compress around the upper part of the leg or the shin to the point that there is contact and everything moves together. Too big, too loose. Again, we have this rotation of the leg inside and a loss of information going to the snowboard itself. So I hope this is helpful and uh, We'll uh, look forward to talking to you again. Hit the like button, subscribe, and uh, leave any comments you have down below. Uh, we'll have more videos to come as the season goes. We're probably about uh, three weeks away from actually being on the snow. So uh, keep our fingers crossed and hope for snow. Later.